Hi guys and welcome back. In this video we'll be taking a look at 10 powerful concepts that will boost your game dev journey in Unreal Engine 5. This is especially useful if you're transitioning from Unity to Unreal Engine 5. Let's get started. By the way guys, the footage you're seeing on the screen is from my game Project Enigma which aims to unify gamers of all genres. Now I will give more information about this in upcoming videos so stay tuned for that and make sure you're subscribed. Also, link down in the video description below is a link to my Discord server and my Patreon page. So if you guys do have any questions or suggestions or if you guys do wish to support me, do check those out as well. And let's begin with the video. At number 10 is line tracing. Now this is called ray casting in other game engines. Using it is fairly straightforward. Right click on your event graph and call this function called line trace by channel. Then we can go ahead and determine the start and end locations using the following logic as shown as screen. We can get the player camera manager, get the forward vector, get the camera's location and just add the forward direction multiplied by a constant so that the trace goes forward from your player's view. Now we can connect that to an input event such as the left mouse button and just for showing the line itself we can draw debug type for duration and if we actually hit anything we can go ahead and destroy it. Now line traces are used for various things such as weapons and there are many other types of traces but this is beyond the scope of this video so as you can see as soon as I click it gets destroyed. At number 9 is console commands. You can click on your tilde key below your escape key to open up the console and you can type in any command. There are range of commands which you can type such as exit and a few which I'm showing on screen to change the graphic settings. These are extremely useful if you want to manage various in-game settings and stuff. You can also call it at runtime through your code in blueprint by calling the execute console command function and you can go ahead and type in the command in the argument. Now over here if you don't hit anything you are going to exit the game. So I shoot the sky and I exit. Alright so at number 8 is the construction script. Now this is the equivalent of your constructor in C++ and it allows you to set initial values to various parameters in your objects and also it enables you to do some really cool things such as what I'm showing here. So it can be used for stuff like procedural generation. So in the example which I'm showing, I'm basically going to generate a random number of cubes and every time we actually play the game or every time we actually construct this object, the number of cubes is going to change. In order to do that, I'm using a concept known as instancing. Now I can go ahead and create hierarchical instance static mesh component. So what this basically is, it's basically a component which can have many instances of the same mesh. The advantage of using instancing or regular static meshes is performance mainly. So it's as if you have drawn only one mesh. So the performance is going to be much better than if you had, you know, 10 separate cubes. So I'm going to go ahead and use the add instance function from the hierarchical instance static mesh component and I'm going to set the location to be the index times some constant value. Now we should be spawning cubes in equal intervals now. All I have to do now is set the cube mesh over here and we should be getting it. Now the cube is way too big so I'll select another cube and as you can see it's spawning different cubes and we're getting different numbers each time depending on what the random number generated is. At number 7 is data tables. Now in order to use a data table you will need a structure which is basically a collection of variables for the most part. So I'm going to create a few parameters over here. So for example for weapon stats you'll have damage, your reload time and maybe your max watch speed and maybe your you know uh, weapon display name itself. So I can go ahead and create a data table asset and select my struct over there. So inside my data table asset, I will be having all the properties which I had in the struct. So let's say I have an AK-47, I give the appropriate damage values, reload time and so on. And let's say I have an M416 and I can give its damage values and these are easily modifiable. So later on, if you do want to change it, you can just quickly open this table and change it as well. You can also import it from an Excel sheet or something but that's beyond the scope of this video. So using this function, 
called get data table row names you can get all the rows and we can just loop through it and just print it out however you need not do that you can have you know weapon spawned and from there you can just get the name of it and get the table row from the data table object so now once you have it you have access to all the properties of that weapon all you need is the name and as you can see it prints out the name at number six is plugins now there are many plugins which the engine provides but you can also get some amazing ones such as this low entry extended standard library or the varus plugin which allows you to add a lot more functionality to your game so if i just search in low entry in this case so you'd see that this plugin provides various functions which i do not have access to in the editor there are many other plugins as well you can create your own the possibilities are endless they simplify your work and also improve code reusability so that you can reuse your existing code on your new projects so do use plugins at number five is event dispatchers now these work kind of like callback functions and you can call them on every object that has bound the event so let me show you an example so i've created an event dispatcher in my character i'll just go ahead and create a simple widget to show whether the player has won or not i'll just set the text to not yet and as soon as we create the widget we'll just get our owning player pawn which will be our third person character and we'll bind the event to it so basically every time we call it this event will be called over here wherever we have bound it you can also unbind it as well so we just set the text to one and now what we do is in the level blueprint as well we can do it so we'll get the player character cast it to a third person character and we'll just add a delay because as soon as the layer level starts our character need not be valid so we'll go ahead and call our event and we can just go ahead and exit the game after a small delay so after two seconds we'll just exit the game so if you would notice now if we click both the events are called at number four is timers now timers are used as an alternative to delays and they are much more accurate as well as they keep your code much cleaner and this is how you should be actually handling stuff with you know delays involved in them so you can either call set timer by event or set timer by function name and we can go ahead and do a quick firing function we can reuse the line tracing logic and at the hit location we'll just spawn a particle effect using the explosion effect which comes built into the starter content set the function name in our timer and we can go ahead and set that to looping to simulate an automatic weapon also note that the function will be called after 0.1 seconds if you want it to be called once instantly as well just make sure you call the function once before calling the timer so we can go ahead and clear it once we release it so as you can see we get an automatic firing weapon over here so that's basically about timers at number three is the player state now the player state is a special class which is in unreal engine and it gives us access to various things such as getting the player name getting the ping mostly useful for multiplayer games the main advantage of the player state is that the player state of every other player is accessible to every other player on the server including the server itself so you can go ahead and get player name get the ping and so on to use it you can go ahead and head into world settings and set the player state under your game mode override so there select bp player state and for example we'll just go ahead and print out the player name on tick and this is going to work totally fine you can do this on other clients as well next up is the game instance now the game instance is a special class in the sense it talks about your actual game window so as soon as you start the game a game instance object is created and it is persistent throughout your game so whether you transition between levels or whatever happens in the game as long as your game is open this object is persistent you can use it to store stuff like settings which will be common between levels you know now in order to set it as the default the one you created you can go ahead and set it in your project settings as simple as that the last one is something extremely basic yet overlooked that is functions and macros now function is something common between you know all game engines and stuff however macros is something which is unique to blueprint in unreal engine now this is different from the preprocessor macro which you have in c++ they work completely differently 
Now you can right click on any set of nodes and collapse it to a function. Basically a function is a block of code and you can call it through an object. But obviously you don't want to call something like movement input. So what you can do is you can convert it to a macro instead. So you can only call the macro within this object itself. So within this class basically. So if I go ahead and make this a macro, I can call this inside the third person character, but with, with the object of it, I cannot call it outside. The main advantage of a macro is that you can use multiple execution pins as well as add delays. If you would notice, if I go ahead and create a function, I will not get access to the delay node, which is exclusive to macros. 